Can I record my introduction later in a little while? <laughs> Can I plan this and try again? It'll get done, don't worry, don't worry. Hi, my name is Zavraj Thakar and I'm a junior at the Illinois Math and Science Academy. I'm originally from Bartlett, Illinois, and as you can see, my topic is clearly about procrastination, where it occurs in the brain, and how I overcame it. Um, outside of neuroscience and entrepreneurship, my passions include learning new things every day and helping people become the best version of, this, of themselves. Um, I love tutoring people and working with kids, especially because sometimes teaching a new concept gives yourself the best learning experience. You learn more by teaching other people. And that's sort of why I feel so gratified by the opportunity to give this TED Talk. Because throughout this process, I've gotten so much valuable advice, not only related to my topic about procrastination, but also for public speaking, which I'm extremely grateful for. Now, I may have put off writing this speech until a few days ago, which is ironic considering I'm talking about how to deal with procrastination, but don't worry, you're listening to an expert. When I first heard about IMSA in eighth grade, I knew I had to go there. I had way too much free time on my hands at home, so naturally, I was inclined to tackle the challenges of living and working at such a highly esteemed organization. So I made a goal, and it was a simple goal. On August 16th, 2018, I would pack my bags, kiss my parents goodbye, and study here in Aurora. But on February 1st, 2019, at 11.56 p.m., I was three minutes away from hitting the application deadline, but also three lines away from finishing my last application essay. I was stressed beyond imagination. I had two whole months to finish my application, but here I was using the last two minutes to get it in on time. How many of us have been in a similar situation, working right up to that 11.59 p.m. deadline? Yeah, don't worry, you're not alone. Procrastination has been causing us to miss deadlines for thousands of years. Even Greek poets and Roman scholars warned their citizens to only put off until tomorrow what you're willing to die having left undone today. But as much as it seems like a byproduct of laziness and poor decision making, there are several biological factors at play in the minds of procrastinators. Now, although I managed to turn in my application on time, I promised myself that I wouldn't put off any more work at IMSA. During my first year here, I was the quintessential bright-eyed sophomore who took every single opportunity he could get. This meant that I was always in the auditorium practicing for IMSA's Indian Student Association, or I would be in the library studying for my next Science Olympiad tournament, or I would be in the lecture hall for the next medical society meeting. But as the year progressed, my ambitions always seemed to collide with my schedule, and I found myself creeping back into my old habits of procrastinating. Besides my interest for neuroscience and medicine, I quickly became intrigued with entrepreneurship after being exposed to it at, here at IMSA. One of my most memorable experiences was participating in a business a uh, crash course called Element, where we went down to 1871 and Chicago to interact with startups to learn the hard and soft skills of entrepreneurship. But during this time, a problem came up during the bus ride. Now, my friends and I loved to sleep on the bus, but we'd always be cold and disoriented and wake up with a stiff neck. To solve this issue, my friend and I had the idea to combine a pillow and a blanket to create a portable sleeping solution. We called our idea the Siesta app and turned it into a startup. And during my sophomore year, I would stay up, forget my homework, and do market research, or sketch out prototypes, or even sit on the floor until one or two in the morning just cutting out fabric. Now, don't get me wrong, I loved practicing my entrepreneurial skills, but it came at an unprecedented cost. I couldn't manage my extracurriculars with my homework. I'd often stay up late and forget to set aside time for personal activities, such as sleeping or working out. This is where my procrastination crept back in. 
Now, I'll be honest, I knew I had the capabilities to balance my homework and my extracurriculars, but for some reason, I just seemed to worry too much about my responsibilities instead of actually fulfilling them. I did everything I could to stop procrastinating, and trust me, I looked way beyond just the first few pages of Google to find an answer. But even though all of us have tried making a task list and keeping a planner, for me, it just simply wasn't working. My leftover tasks from one day would just snowball into the next day until I couldn't take it anymore. I knew that if I wanted to keep pursuing my interests during junior year, I would have to find a way to circumvent the roadblocks that encouraged my procrastination. Now, if you think about it, procrastination just doesn't make sense. Why would you find ways to avoid starting tasks that are crucial to your personal or professional lives? This is where I had to combine my interests and turn to neuroscience for the answer. Now, as you might remember from my application story, I wasn't particularly fond of writing essays. So throughout the year, I kept a journal, and I would write down some thoughts I would have while I was procrastinating my essays. I then chose the top five recurring thoughts and tried to understand the psychology behind them. Once I understood the psychology behind them, I took these psychological characteristics and correlated them to specific parts of the brain to understand the biological root of my procrastination. Once I knew where, I, where my procrastination was coming from, I implemented specific neurological tactics in my daily life that would help me overcome this problem once and for all. Now, for example, if I would say, writing papers is so boring, I wasn't really that interested in what I had to do. If I asked myself, what if I can't answer the prompt, I was afraid of my abilities as a writer. If I asked myself, why was I even writing papers in the first place, I couldn't see the benefits of doing my work on time. If I said, I'll be fine if I start this in a couple of hours, I was putting off my responsibilities. And if I just said, well, they can't make me write these essays, I was retaliating against my circumstances. But where did these thoughts even come from? Well, they came from a part of my brain called the limbic system. Evolutionarily speaking, the limbic system is one of the oldest parts of the brain to develop. It consists primarily of the hypothalamus, which controls your instinctive biological responses. It's also composed of the septonuclei, which are the pleasure centers of your brain, and the amygdala, which controls fear. So when I would ask myself, when I would say, writing papers is so boring, it was my septal nuclei not activating. When I would ask myself, what if I can't answer the prompt, my amygdala was afraid of my abilities as a writer. If I said, if I asked myself, what's the benefit to writing these essays, my hypothalamus couldn't see why I was putting in so much effort in the first place. And if I said, I'll be fine if I start my paper in a couple of hours, my amygdala triggered its flight response and I was running away from my responsibilities. But on the other hand, if I rebelled and said, they can't make me write these papers, my amygdala triggered its fight response. But surely there must be a part of the brain that made me start writing these papers in the first place. And you're right. It's called the neocortex. It's a newer part of the brain that deals with higher order functions, such as cognition, spatial reasoning, language processing, and making decisions that affect your future. Now, even though your neocortex might prioritize some tasks in your forethought, you still tend to put off certain things that might not be palatable for your limbic system to allow. And since the limbic system is relatively subconscious, it's always going to have the upper hand in the fight against your neocortex.
So now I knew why I was procrastinating. What could I do about it? Well, to beat procrastination, I knew I had to let my neocortex win. And to beat my limbic system, I could either trick my limbic system into thinking that it's winning, or I could bypass it altogether. Now, to trick your limbic system, you need to feed your instant gratification demon. For me, I did this by creating micro goals. So, for example, if I'm writing my paper, I'd tell myself I'd finish one page here or one paragraph there, and then I'd take a break and relax or watch YouTube. But eventually, my brain began to realize that it was the act of accomplishing my goal itself that sparked my happiness, and my breaks became fewer and farther apart until eventually I could just sit down, finish my paper, and then relax afterwards. Another way I tricked my limbic system was by solidifying the repercussions of not doing my work on time and identifying the benefits of getting my work in early. This meant that I would actually take a piece of paper and write out what would happen if I turned my essay in early versus if I turned my essay in late. This helped my brain realize that I'll be much happier and much better off if I get my work done first and then have fun later. But there comes a certain time where you just have to bypass your limbic system altogether. We've all been in this situation. You're in the zone. You're working furiously with your eyebrows scrunched up, you're concentrated in your work, and all of a sudden, you hear that ding. Now, just like that, all of your focus and concentration goes down the drain. The culprit, your phone. Design your environment in a way that minimizes distractions, whether they're physical or digital. This means putting your phone in another room while you work, or marking yourself offline on social media, or even just keeping the necessary tabs open in your browser. This way, your limbic system can't distract you from your work because, well, there will be no distractions left. <laughs> and although everyone's heard this before, it's important to keep a healthy diet, maintain your exercise, and make sure to get plenty of sleep because if your body isn't satisfied with itself, your limbic system will make sure that it reminds you while you're trying to focus. Now, an object in motion tends to remain in motion, and an object in rest tends to remain at rest. You can definitely overcome the forces of procrastination. If you just sit down, start working, and power through, your momentum will naturally carry you until you get everything you need to get done, done. But don't worry if you're just an occasional procrastinator. After all, we're only human. But don't forget, even though you might procrastinate and you might wait, time will not. Thank you.